you know, I like Eli a lot, and I know uh, he does need to win. Um, I thought, uh, but I was also critical of him just a few weeks ago uh, when he uh, made the statements he did about um, which I thought were somewhat over the top and holier than thou. And he prefaced his statements by saying, okay, I guess I'm going to go there again. But since I am going to go there again, and he started in about, you know, the poor student athlete, no one's consulting them about all this movement and uh, having to get on airplanes and fly all night and play at difficult times and then make their way back, you know, cry me a river, Eli. I mean, stop. I mean, I, I was critical of him. I was, and I like the guy. I do. Um, I do think that this year, his fan base, particularly, you guys know better than, than I would, but I think his fan base is um, is tired of the headlines and they want to see some W's over the L's. That's what they want to see. And he spent half the time at the media days talking about how much he was going to stop talking and, and start delivering. And then the first chance he got when the realignment issue came up, boom, he went there and he just couldn't help himself. Uh, but that's who he is. I mean, he's a candid, forthright guy. And like I said, for the most part, I really enjoy that in him. I think coaches all need to be themselves. But but uh, Drinkwitz to me is a guy that really knows the game, but his persona is so charismatic and so um, – effervescent in a lot of ways that I think people lose sight of the fact, particularly those that hear it all the time. And that's the fan base in and around Columbia, Missouri. They're like, we've heard all this before. We we've heard this. Your material is new, not new to us. It may be new to the national guys, but it's not new to us. And so uh, it looks like he's telling himself now to chill and, and go out and win some football games. Listen, the schedule is not, um, it's not easy. Missouri's got a tough schedule. I think South Carolina does too. A lot of those teams in the East, uh, like South Carolina and Missouri, have high expectations this year. You know, Shane Beamer's had a lot of upset wins. Maybe got a little bit ahead of schedule last year. Uh, I don't know that they can do that this season because I think his schedule is that much more difficult. But I do think Missouri is uh, an under-the-radar team with all the players he has returning. And the schedule shapes up to be really good. I think that, you know, look, South Dakota, the Jackrabbits, that's not a walkover. They're good. They've been good uh, at the FCS level for quite a while. Uh, then that Kansas State game comes up. Mm. and That's your you Big got, 12 champion. Oh, you got them in, the top, in your top 10. The Big 12, yeah, I do. I, I think, um, and, if I, and if I'm wrong about Kansas State, it'll be proven when they play Missouri at Missouri. Um, if Missouri beats them, then he could get on a bit of a roll here going into conference play. And I've oftentimes said in situations like that, when you get an unexpected win or you beat a favorite opponent, even if that favorite opponent is in your stadium, I don't know what the spread is now. Hell, it might even be favored. I'm not sure. In my mind, I don't think they're as good as Kansas State. I don't. But is it a winnable game? Yeah, it is. And if they get it, then I think they could maybe win another game that maybe people don't anticipate. LSU? Now. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think that, that that certainly comes into play if you can beat Kansas State. Uh, no question. And obviously a lot can happen to LSU between now and the time that game is played. But um, can, can they win eight games? Yeah, they can win eight games. You tell me, is that the magic number? Is that what he has to have to keep uh, his job? It's – I don't Probably. think it's eight, but I think eight, seven. Seven and, seven and a bowl win to get to eight. Okay. I'm, I, I'm, I'm down with that. I think in that division with Georgia and Tennessee and the thought process that the battle is for third between Kentucky, South Carolina, and, and uh, Missouri, um, you know, finishing third probably wouldn't be all that bad. Frankly, I think Tennessee is overrated. Yeah. And I think that Kentucky is underrated. I think Kentucky's got a schedule that really puts them in a, the best position to not only finish um, with a good record, but also be good enough to um, to finish second because I think they're capable of beating Tennessee. I don't I don't think Milton is the goods. I don't think he's uh, Hendon Hooker at all. 